Hi everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Sid Cowley, I'm a PhD student studying at the University of York and working here in Oxford at the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy. Today is Wednesday the 28th of June and I'm here to give you your Fusion News Roundup. Stories today include 1. Germany sees opportunity in nuclear fusion, but funding for research remains uncertain. 2. With $10 trillion on the line, six fusion investors explain why they're all in. 3. UK-US partnership for nuclear fusion rockets. 4. Why the mother of dragons at SpaceX left her job building rockets to work on nuclear fusion. And 5. Energy subcommittee hearing from theory to reality the limitless potential of fusion energy. And as always, I'll have some bonus stories at the end for you. One, Germany sees opportunity in nuclear fusion, but funding for research remains uncertain. Our first story from ABC News details the announcement of a new national strategy on fusion released by the German government. Now this draft strategy released by Science Minister Bettina stark Watzinger on Thursday seemed to be a strong commitment by the German government to continue funding into nuclear fusion. As part of the national strategy, Watzinger announced, we want to address both magnetic and laser fusion. Now this is a key change in direction since the country currently only invests roughly 149 million euros per year into laser fusion. Its main focus is magnetic fusion. So this investment into lasers is expected to increase, but currently the exact proposed increase is unknown. Of course, this increase in laser fusion resources will also be great news for the private laser startups, such as the German-based Fusion Industry Association member Marvel Fusion and FIA member Focused Energy, which has previously received grants from the German government. As well as increasing commitments to lasers, Germany intends to continue its funding into magnetic confinement fusion. This includes continuing its contribution to the international tokamak eater, but also includes funding the domestic world-class Stellarator, the Wendelstein 7X in the north of Germany, and one of the most powerful tokamaks in operation today, Azdex Upgrade, near Munich. Two, with $10 trillion on the line, six fusion investors explain why they're all in. This next story is a culmination of six fantastic interviews with fusion investors to understand the promises and pitfalls the investment community sees in fusion. Speaking to people from The Engine, Breakthrough Energy Ventures, Congruent Ventures, Colsa Ventures, Chrysalix Venture Capital, and the MCJ Collective. Now, for me, this is an incredibly interesting article because we hear a lot about public and scientific opinions on nuclear fusion, but we don't often hear about investor opinions, which are, I think are really crucial for developing a private fusion industry. The article highlights the optimism of many investors, driven by scientific advances in key fusion supporting technologies, such as superconducting magnets or lasers. According to Tai Nguyen, partner at the MCJ Collective, this recent renaissance in fusion has seen a blossoming of diverse technologies. Now, the investors also talk about the ability for private fusion to fund more risky fusion approaches, which is very exciting. Approaches that, as Joshua Possamentier, managing partner at Congruent Ventures puts it, largely couldn't get funded given the gravity of tokamaks and laser inertial fusion mega projects. Finally, the investors talk about some of the risks in investing in fusion, which I think is important as well. A key challenge in fusion investment is timeline. Katie Ray, CEO of The Engine, said, if you have a traditional five to seven year time horizon venture fund, it is difficult for fusion investments to make sense. But according to investors like Ray, the immense impact and economic potential of fusion justifies investing in the slower timeline. After all, the world spends more than 10 trillion US dollars on energy. And if fusion could capture just a part of that market, it could be transformative. Three, US-UK partnership for nuclear fusion rockets. This story from World Nuclear News covers a recent collaboration agreement for nuclear fusion. But instead of the usual application for fusion that you might be expecting of energy generation, this partnership focuses on another fascinating application of nuclear fusion, rocket propulsion. But why are we looking into fusion propulsion in the first place? 
Well, relative to present day chemical propellants, fusion has a significantly higher potential energy density. This means the ratio of your payload to fuel mass can be much larger and rockets would be able to reach much farther destinations like Pluto, for example. This particular article covers a partnership between the Oxford-based company Pulsar Fusion and Princeton Satellite Systems, the parent company of the FIA member Princeton Fusion Systems. The partnership aims to develop predictive simulations that may be used to design fusion propulsion systems. They will do this by studying electron and ion behavior in the Princeton Field Reversed Configuration Device, which was developed at the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory. Now this collaboration aims to leverage a lot of new and groundbreaking physics, such as AI, among other tools. Now one of the many reasons I love fusion is how futuristic and science fiction it feels. And stories like this are so exciting to me. Stories which show the sci-fi-like possibilities of nuclear fusion and plasmas. Four, why the mother of dragons at SpaceX left her job building rockets to work on nuclear fusion. Our next story today comes from CNBC and covers Darby Dunn, who held several production and engineering jobs at SpaceX and was even unofficially referred to as the mother of dragons for her work on the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. However, in January 2019, Dunn changed her career and started working on the Massachusetts-based fusion startup Commonwealth Fusion Systems. The article covers her transition to fusion and her motivation behind it. Discussing her motivation for the switch, Dunn tells CNBC, For me, it really came down to wanting to use my energy to clean up the planet instead of getting off it. So that was a huge shift for me to come to CFS, or Commonwealth Fusion Systems. She also speaks to CNBC about the excitement of joining CFS in the early stages as its 10th employee and getting to oversee the rapid progress it's made since then. For example, Dunn talks about the structure for Spark, CFS's under construction tokamak. She discusses how it started off as a doodle three years ago, but now she's getting to see the steel beams going up, walls going up, concrete getting poured. She says it's a whole vision coming to life. Now, perhaps the most exciting part of the article for me is the potential that Dunn sees for fusion and how, like many people do with fusion now, many people severely doubted SpaceX could ever achieve its proposed mission. According to Dunn, when Elon said publicly that we were going to launch and land rockets back from space, everybody said, that's not possible. You can't do it. It took many attempts, a lot of learning, a lot of iterations on our software, many failed attempts off the boat, and then we did it. And then we did it again, and we did it again, and we did it again. Let's just hope with fantastic talent like Dunn on Nuclear Fusion's side that we can make similar leaps and bounds. Five, energy subcommittee hearing from theory to reality, the limitless potential for fusion energy. Our final story covers a recent US House Science, Space and Technology Committee hearing on nuclear fusion. The hearing featured a broad panel of fusion experts, including Catherine McCarthy, director of the US ITER project office, David Kirtley, CEO of Helion Energy, Wayne Solomon, Vice President of Magnetic Confinement Fusion at General Atomics, and Andrew Holland, our own CEO of the Fusion Industry Association. Also there was Scott Chu, Lead Fusion Coordinator at the US Department of Energy. During the hearing, witnesses and representatives alike discussed the current level of fusion funding in the US and in particular, Joe Biden's budget request for more than $1 billion for nuclear fusion for 2024. On the other hand, a big concern was that House Republicans are planning to initiate budget cuts to all non-defense government agencies, which include science and nuclear fusion. And many at the hearing expressed concerns over this defunding. According to committee ranking member Zoe Lofgren, if we don't translate this sizable leap in support into actual appropriated funds this year, then our nation will have missed a major opportunity to meet this pivotal moment. I really recommend you check this hearing out. It's available on YouTube with the information and the hearing charter available on the US House Space, Science and Technology Committee website. Right, well, that's all for our main stories this week, but of course we have some bonuses as well. Don't head off just yet. 
Our first bonus is a video from the excellent energy and technology YouTube channel, Undecided with Matt Ferrell. In this 20 minute episode, Matt visits where I work at the UK Atomic Energy Authority here in Oxfordshire. He toured the Joint European Taurus, which is the world record holder for fusion energy output in a device, as well as Mast Upgrade, the device I work on, which mainly studies novel shaping of the plasma edge in tokamaks to prevent material damage. Matt interviews some really great people from the UK Atomic Energy Authority, and as always, he always takes an excited but balanced view on nuclear fusion. I really recommend you check this video out. Finally, we have a lecture from the Royal Institution by Dr. Melanie Windridge. This lecture, available on YouTube, covers the fundamental science, history, and status of nuclear fusion, and has some really fantastic tabletop science demonstrations as well. Melanie really is one of the best communicators in nuclear fusion, and I do recommend you check this lecture out. It's really engaging and so much fun. Right, well, that's all for Fusion News this week. If you enjoyed, please, as always, we love to hear your support through likes, comments, or subscriptions to our channel. And of course, if you wanna take a deep dive into any of the stories mentioned today, the links will be in the description, and we have our Fusion News Extra podcast as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.